You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on KLOS with my guest, Glenn Danzig. How are you, Glenn? Uh, just getting over being sick, but... Yeah. Yeah. You've had it a few times, you said. Yeah, so I have an idea about it. Well, what'd you, why do you think you get... Do you get sick a lot, would you say? No, I don't actually. I think this is some kind of government bioengineered like uh, virus, so... They're drug. testing it? No, just so the drug companies keep making money selling drugs to people getting sick. What do you think that um do you think that um one day they're gonna have have one that um kills everyone? Oh, they already have one, so it's just whether they want to use it or not. <laughs> Will it leave anyone alive though? Because I was watching a show about this actually, on the uh, the, the do you ever watch that channel American Heroes uh, channel? It's, it used to be the military channel, now it's this other one, and they they were going on about. All that that um, the Spanish flu killed like uh, I don't know fifty million people back in like the early nineteen hundreds when there was a civil war going on. It's kind of like a pandemic, right? Yeah, yeah, plague. I don't know. Uh, there are different theories about pandemics that sometimes they say they're man-made to kind of keep the population down. Exactly. There's a lot of people in the world right now. It's almost. Eight billion or, or counting? Well, you know the Bilderbergs have a, a plan to depopulate the world by 33 and a third percent. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe. They yeah. sell it as nat a natural act, though, because they're not telling you that they're putting out a bug to kill 33 percent, whatever. Everybody knows now anyway. It's, it's almost like, you know, everybody is now allowed to say the emperor has no clothes yeah. because... He, you, you know, now they'll try to call it fake news or whatever, but it is what it is. Yeah, that's why there's wars. Well, there's wars for lots of different let's reasons. Say, let's say, I don't want to kill... This is what it is. Ain't it? Yeah, you of course. Call it dosh, you of know? course. Yeah, that's why there's wars. I don't want to kill anybody, but if there wasn't wars, and if there wasn't this and the other, there'd be 10 trillion people on the planet right now if there was never any... You know what I mean? Well, the... Uh, People seem to forget that the world, the earth, is a living thing. Right. It's a living thing that has a balance that it creates itself. Right. And when that balance goes out of whack, the earth will do things to set that balance back. Yeah. And so science or, you know, technology will try to reverse that. But the earth is actually a living thing that will do what it has to do to clean house. Yeah. So that's why... Some pandemics may actually be not man-made and may be natural. It's like it's like brush fires in Australia. Every few years, they burn naturally to regrow again. It's the same concept. Well, I have a theory about the fires in California. Go on then. What is it? Terrorism. You think so? It's it's maximum amount of carnage. Uh, for the littlest amount of money, a match and a can of gas. Yeah. And you go out and then brush and boom. Doesn't cost a lot of money, it's done. Yeah. Yeah. That's really what it's about, right? I mean, I guess. You're going to outlaw guns. Some guy just decides he's going to plow a giant truck into a ton of people in France and kills way more people. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, I mean, if somebody wants to do something terrible like that, they're going to do it. Do you think that's always been the way of humans to have have that percentage who just want to um, who are just not happy campers and just want to cause havoc? They just want to f shit up, right? Yeah. <laughs> Can I say that on the air? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I don't mean the f part. I mean the a, the word after that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Of course. You know, there's always going to people be people that aren't happy with something. Uh, it's just a matter of whether they're going to go to an extreme to do it. Yeah. Do you think it was wrong when humans come along? It's, it all seems to be cohesive before humans come to the planet. Like animals did their thing. They don't leave any waste. Then humans come along and kind of... It's messing it up. Um, actually, it, it seems like people are not so upset when animals kill other animals or kill people. Right. But they're more upset when people kill people or people kill animals. Yeah. It's kind of a double standard. Well, uh, uh, animals are killing animals for necessity. 
Not necessarily. Sometimes it's territorial. And 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 some animals ain't even. They just eat eat grass, like a lot of big animals. Yeah. Like I remember seeing this uh, show on cable, and they showed these large monkeys. I don't know if they were gorillas, but they were large monkeys, and they were knocking other small, kind of spidery kind of monkeys out of the tree, and then ripping them apart and eating them. And it was the first time I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, uh, an animal like a, a monkey or an ape eating another ape yeah or, like just ripping it apart yeah alive yeah it's pretty crazy life is strange man it's very strange do you believe in ghosts uh i don't disbelieve yeah. um i don't know necessarily that they can if there is a ghost that it can physically touch you yeah you know i think it's probably more people being scared or Maybe psychically they can affect you. Physically, I don't think they can actually touch you. Have you have you ever been in in a house where you're like, get me out of here? It's weird. No, it never freaks me out. I just you ever feel that though when you go in certain places, you're like, something's weird here. My grandma's old house in Boston. Did someone die in there? Yeah, this lady that lived there. She was bringing all these weird borders in, and this lady died in a room, and it was just a weird room. It was strange. Nobody lived in it after she died, and. It, Really weird vibe. Mm. You could go in there and kind of like time slip. Yeah. It was like really creepy. Yeah. You hear that low hum when you go in. It's like, yeah. You're listening to Jones's Jukebox with my guest Glenn Danzig. We're sorting out the world's problems right now. <laughs> I don't think we have time. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Should we play some music? Look, what's, look, let's talk about what you got going on here first. Uh huh. The blackest of black. Is is this your deal? Yeah, blackest of the black is a, a festival I started back in two thousand and three, and we've just been growing it and growing it. And this year, we're finally able, with the help of a lot of partners, to take it even bigger. Yeah. And it's really, you know, because you you probably played the festivals in Europe, and they're great because they're just fantastic festivals with tons of different bands. Yeah. Like everyone gets, you know. And here it's kind of like more of a uh, all the same type of music. Yeah. And a lot of really, yeah, a lot of different kind of music doesn't get on there, and that's why I wanted to put some of this kind of stuff. And that's why I started it, so that some of the bands you don't see on those festivals get to be seen. Yeah. Is this a one day deal or just two days? Two days. A weekend, I take it. Yeah. Saturday and Sunday. Friday and Saturday. Friday and Saturday. We're camping. Uh, we're gonna have wrestling. We're gonna have uh, we're trying to have the Lucha Underground wrestling. Lots of dark, cool, crazy wrestlers. Uh, I think there's camping. Um, I think there's gonna be a haunted drive-in. May twenty-six and twenty-seventh, Oak Canyon Park, Silverado. Where's that? Isn't it kind of down by early old Irvine Meadows? Yeah. Oh, it's down south. Let's play some music. We're here with Glenn Danzig. Let's play um, Jesus Is Me Alt Rod. Thank you. That's a good song. You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on KLOS with my guest, Glenn Danzig. <clears throat> How are you? Uh, good. Didn't you ask me that already? Yeah, I know. That was 10 minutes ago. You uh, might have changed. I'm still good. I'm still You're still good. good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, what else you what else you been up to? You, you doing any recording? I uh, just finished uh, the new Danzig album. Just finished mixing it. Uh, it's gonna come out in May, and then uh, the Danzig sings Elvis comes after that. Oh yeah, yeah. You doing a, a whole album of Elvis songs? It's done, mate. It's done all right. Um, I didn't know that. Um, what was I gonna say? That song that's on Less Than Zero, I played that a couple of weeks ago. You did? Yeah. Some people like it. it it's yeah. great. It's great. You have a good croony voice. That's what I've heard. You don't think so? No, yeah, I would agree with that. I, I don't have a traditional metal voice, yeah. like, you know, like Rob Halford or Bruce Dickinson or whatever. Yeah. I sing more like those guys. I mean, when deeper, I come... Deeper tones. Deeper, um, when I started out, in bands, it was always very bluesy stuff anyway. Yeah. So, you know, I guess, you know, stuff like Elvis, 
What was smoke though? I gotta shut it off. You got an old school phone. I don't like that new shit. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> So Dan, anyway. Danny Trejo was on the show a couple of weeks ago. He had exactly the same phone. Yeah, it's good. Can't get hacked. He loves it. Yeah, you can't get hacked. I don't even want one, really. I like my life much better when I didn't have a cell phone because now everybody needs to get a hold of me. And if I'm doing something, I don't want to be bothered, you know. So leave me the you-know-what alone. So you think, you think, <laughs> you, do you think every, like the, the government are spying on you? Do you believe that concept and all that stuff? It's tougher with this, but if you've got an iPhone, yeah, they know exactly where you are. Anybody can find you, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Anybody that wants to find you can find you on that phone. But, but... No buts. There's a, there's a, there's a, <laughs> there's a, there's a billion people. Why would anyone want to know what I'm doing unless they're like some weird train spotter? There you go. The train spotter? You never know who wants John Z. <laughs> You never know who wants to find you. That's oh, the problem. Yeah. You don't know. Yeah. You you could say something on the air. Somebody's like, oh, my. When did you discover you wanted to be a singer? Uh, How old was you? Teenager? Yeah, I started out as a drum tech. Did you? Yeah. And then, uh, and I wanted to play bass. It was simple. You know, bass is so easy. So, mm. so anyway, um, I eventually, some people had heard me singing. You know, our friends getting crazy and blah 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 i'm a little kid and they asked me to come and try out for their band and um i said i'll try out but i want to make sure we do original songs too and not just covers you know you know when you kids do cover songs and so uh i got the gig so then the guy i drum tech for was a uh, can i say dick yeah yeah he was dick <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, that's a good one yeah so uh not before bad. i left uh you know, I had to clean his drums after everything. You know, uh. The paste and everything. It's like, he missed his paste. Uh. Peed all over his set. Yeah, of course. I quit. <laughs> that was it. I was out. <laughs> and I never looked back. And then you just started singing. Yeah. So the little kid with this big voice. What year What there. year was this? Oh, God. It had to be... Eight, 1971. Eight, oh, that early? Yeah. 71. 70, 71 around there, yeah. How old are you? Old. I'm probably older than you. I'm 61. I think I got you. Really? Yeah. You're, you're winning the race? Yeah. You're ahead of me? Yeah. Wow. So what was your influences growing up uh, as a teen? Was you into glam and stuff? Later, yeah. Well, not glam. We called it uh, glitter. Yeah. So it was uh, like the dolls. I saw the dolls so many times. Did you? Yeah. In New York? All over. They would, you know, pretty much like the heartbreakers, when they needed rent money, they would play anyway. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I saw him a couple of times in England. At Did you Wembley. see him with the old drummer or the new drummer? I saw him with the, the drummer and he died like two days later. That's right. He opened up for the Faces yeah. at Wembley Pool. Yeah. And I was at that show. See, we were kids and we all had fake IDs so we could go into Manhattan and go to the clubs, you know, and so, but you could see anybody. Were they I mean, good? Did you, did, did, I when you saw good. the dolls, was you like, wow, this is crazy? Or did you think, who are these lame? No, I thought they were incredible. Yeah. The energy was just, you know, later, of course, it kind of fell off. But um, it, the energy, though, and just, you know. Did people like them? Yeah, they loved them. New York people? Everywhere. I don't know about outside of the New York tri-state area. Yeah. But people loved them. I loved the first album when I, when I got it. I like both of the albums. Yeah, me too. Yeah. But that first album really, like, Todd Rundgren produced it. And it was just a great sounding record. I, I thought it it was good, but it didn't catch what they were like live. It's, it's really hard to catch the live sound. You know that it, it's really tough, especially back then. Engineers were so dumb, yeah, and they just were in a, this mindset. Yeah, you know. I remember when we went in to record like the first Misfits record. The guy asked us if we could play slower so he could record it because we were playing too fast. Yeah, <laughs> so I looked at it and I'm like. <laughs> old hippie, I want to kill you. Yeah, yeah. Well, that 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 was it. Was a certain mentality in studios. Guys used to wear white coats and smoke pipes. People don't realize how different it was and yeah. how tough it was for the bands. Yeah, I'm sure you can relate. I'm yeah. sure when you guys went in, they were just like, "What the hell is this? Yeah, is, this is not music. Get out of here. Get out of my studio." Yeah, you know, they, they deal with that. Shit. Yeah, you know so. It was definitely tough, yeah. So I can understand 
how a guy like Todd Rundgren, who at that time was making a lot of money producing records yeah. for other artists, you know, and gets these guys the dolls and they know five chords, but they play them great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and Giant Thunders knows two leads, but he does them incredible. Yeah. And he's probably just looking at them like, I can't wait for this to be done. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> I think so, yeah. Yeah, maybe. He was pretty out there, though, Vungren. I think he probably tried to do as good a job as he can because his name's going to be on it. But, you know, if you saw the dolls live, you just, to get that energy and excitement, yeah. I think it's it, tough. It was one of the best things I saw. Because I was a Rod Stewart Faces fan. I was a massive Faces fan. And I didn't, and when the dolls came out, I was they blew my mind. But everyone in the crowd hated them. They were slinging stuff at them. Oh, really? Nothing. Yeah, York. it didn't go down well in England. They played at the Felt Forum in New York. I was at the show, and they opened up for the original Motley Hoople. Wow. You know, all the young dudes With the right. cable player who was singing a, a bit there in the, the it was early... With Ian Hunter yeah. and the guys that went to Bad Co. It was the original band. Yeah. 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 So that was a that was a, an important band for you, the Dolls. The Dolls, Love and Underground, um, of course, Elvis, Stooges, some, some stuff. stuff. Yeah. So like uh, uh, later on, uh, you know, the the record would give me Danger, Raw Power, and stuff. Great record. James Williamson's pretty good guitar player. Probably one of my favorite leads yeah. is the lead he did on I Got It Right. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. Oh, uh, lots of old blues. Yeah. Willie Dixon, uh, big, big influence. What did you think of Chuck? Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry. I was, I, I don't Not hate your Chuck bag. Berry, but it wasn't my, I wasn't so rock and rolly like, like even with the Stones. I liked the Stones when Brian Jones was in the band and less when they became just a rock and roll band yeah. after that. So, yeah. I like Muddy Waters, uh, Bo Diddley. You, you like know, the old blue stuff? I like a lot of that stuff. Mm. I love Bo Diddley. Great, great artist. You're listening to Jones's Jukebox with my guest Glenn Danzig. Let's play some more music. <laughs> 